Hello, I return with festive content, as you can tell from my very festive hat. <laughs> Any chance I can get I'm wearing this hat. I mean, I'm not wearing it out today, but it's it's just damn warm and I love it. I like wearing hats. I feel like I'm a hat person. I'm just gonna throw that out into the universe. <laughs> so today's video, I'm very excited about. I'm going back to London today. I was in London on Saturday. I'm gonna be going back today for a bit of a Christmassy day out in London. So on Saturday I went in with Jade and we were really trying to find as many festive things as we could and I feel like we were just a little bit let down, we were a little bit disappointed, it didn't quite have what we thought it would. So I'm going to try and up my game today. I'm going to be heading to Harrods and Selfridges, maybe Liberties, and see the fantastic displays they have on. These are the big fancy department shops in London that have always got fantastic, fantastic Christmas displays. So I'm hoping that those impressed me this year. I am excited to see Harrods especially because I love the TV shows that are about Harrods at Christmas time. It's just, it's so cozy and I love seeing it age throughout time as well and how it's changed over time. So I'm gonna be doing that, meeting up with my friend Kath who's gonna be coming with me for the afternoon. And then in the evening, I am going to a rather exciting book event. So this video is actually working in partnership with Harlan Coburn and with Century Books UK. I'm gonna be heading to a meet and greet with Harlan Coburn later this evening, which is very exciting. You might recognize Harlan Coburn's name. He has written a lot of books, crime thriller -y books and has also had quite a few of those adapted into Netflix adaptations. The Stranger is one that I watched with Richard Armitage in it and it was so good, so gripping. I love those kind of TV shows. It's the kind of one that you literally just have to binge it in one night because it is impossible to look away and his books are very much the same. So I get to go to this meet and greet later and ask Carlin Coburn a couple of questions, which is gonna be really cool. I love being able to pick author's brains. We are there to promote two of his latest books, one of which is called I Will Find You and it follows a father who is wrongfully imprisoned after he is suspected of murdering his son, except whilst he's in prison he receives some evidence telling him that his son might still be alive, so he has to break out of prison to try and find out the truth. I haven't read that one yet, but the one that I have read, or I'm nearly finished with reading, is The Match by Harlan Coburn. This is a very fast-paced thriller, has quite a few different storylines woven through it. I believe that this is the second in a series, however I have not read that first book and this does still work for me. I think there's a bit of context I'm probably missing from not reading the first book, but I don't feel too lost. So in this book we follow Wilde, who is described as the boy from the woods. So this is what the first book is about and telling us more about Wilde's story. But basically Wilde doesn't know who his parents are. He doesn't really know anything about himself. He was found in the woods and he is trying to find this out. He's entered his DNA into a database online and he has found a match. So he's trying to explore more about himself. But this lead kind of runs dry so he continues to poke around a little bit. And in doing so, he gets involved in a couple of dangerous things that are going on. There is a secret community online that's basically dedicated to exposing trolls anonymously. And he somehow gets caught up in this and then subsequently caught up in a potential serial killer where he could be the next victim. It's very fast paced. Immediately as soon as we jump in, we are thrown into the action. There is a lot happening in this. We have multiple different storylines going on with multiple different plots weaving in, which I always enjoy because I feel like there's always something to keep your attention grabbed and that is what Harlan Coben does very, very well. So I'm listening to the audiobook for this at the moment and I have about an hour left, which is perfect because that's about how long it's gonna take me to get into London. So I'm gonna be listening to this on the way. Very excited to chat to Harlan Coben later. As I said, this video is working with Harlan Coben and with Century Books UK as a partnership, but I'm gonna be basically combining Christmas and an author interview today. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Thank Thank you so much for supporting my content and thank you to Century Books and Harlan Coben for working with me in partnership for this video. I'm gonna head to London now, let's go! Okay, I've arrived in London. Sorry if the audio is bad on this, I'm right by the main road. So I had to get off to South Kensington to then walk to where I'm going. But on Saturday, Jade and I came to the Natural History Museum to see the Christmas tree. And it wasn't up, which is really sad because it's always so pretty. I mean, this building is just so pretty anyway. But I have been told that there is a Christmas jumper on a T-Rex in the Natural History Museum. So I'm just gonna go see the T-Rex very quickly <laughs> before making my way onto Harrods. So uh, let's let's go find a Christmas jumper on a dinosaur.
as it would happen, Wednesday would appear to be a popular day for school trips to be in the Natural History Museum. <laughs> it was heaving with children. But I did see the Christmassy T-Saurus T -saur T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it was, it was very worth it. I have never seen a dinosaur with a Christmas hat on, but now I have. Okay, on my way to Harrods now. Bit of a detour, but it was good. I finished the match on the train. The ending, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say any spoilers, but the ending definitely had me hooked and kept me guessing, as Harlan Coben does tend to do. So that was really fun. Glad I got to finish it on the train. I feel like I was very visual in my reactions on the tube as well, but I'm very excited for this event later. Crackers. Oh, I found Kath. Hello. Okay. <laughs> we found some crackers in Harrods that are 750 pounds, and you get a ballpoint pen. Totally you get a look, look at the look at what you get. Also, I feel like such a peasant because people keep walking past as we're like, how expensive are these? A pen, a decoration, a napkin, a scarf. What's that? A scarf? I mean, honestly, 750 quid, and these ones are 100 and something. Selfridges now and we've decided that this Christmas cracker set which is a mere 54 pounds is much better than the one in Harrods and has much better things in it would buy I mean would not buy because it's super expensive but still better items
Hello, Harlan. It's lovely to meet you. Hi, Beth. How Thank are you? Thank you so much for making time for me today. My pleasure. So I've got a couple of questions okay. about generally your writing. I just finished the match this morning okay. on the train. I think I was reacting live on the tube for people to watch. Oh, good. I wish I that, could have seen that. Yeah, the ending was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask, if you were thrown into one of your thrillers, how well do you think you'd cope? Oh, I did terribly. I, yeah. I would completely fall apart. That's why I, I, I write fiction, because I can't do anything else. <laughs> I can't cope in any other circumstance. The only thing I can do well is make stuff up, so I'd be in real trouble if I had to be one of my heroes. Oh dear. They're much, they're much smarter than I am, because they come up with the line or the thing to do you know when you you know when you say that when you're in a conversation and you go, oh, I wish I had said this. Yes. They get to do that because I have a little more time with them. Yes, that is true. So you don't think you would be there front and center solving everything? Even I'd be in big right. trouble. Yeah, yeah, you'd be in big I'd trouble. Be in big trouble. <laughs> oh no. So moving on, men tend to be the lead in your books. I've read a couple of your books and obviously watched some of your shows. Fantastic. Thank you. But what role do women play in your stories, and how are they put to your plots? Well, I have actually had at least uh, five, six, seven, eight novels where the lead character was mm -hmm. a female. I've changed the two TV series to the lead character was female. The last one I had, in fact, was Stay Close, mm -hmm. where Kush Jumbo um, played the lead. The Stranger yeah. was, was, was a woman. Yeah. So um, I don't dif really differentiate that mm -hmm. much. I mean, I obviously know what it's like to be a man yes. better. <laughs> but, um, and, I, and I really have found, I, I love, I, I've done, I did one adaptation uh, for a book called No Second Chance, where I act, where I, the book, the male, it was a male character, but when I did a TV series, I made, I changed that character to being um, a female. So for me, I don't really differentiate or, or try to write women or men differently. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I, I tell you, uh, one of the things, when I, the first one I had written was called Just One Look, the first one I had a female lead, and part of what, I did, the reason I did it was because I was really tired of the bad women in Jeopardy novels. Mm -hmm. You know, the one where the, the like the, the heroine is naive to the point of, I don't know, some kind of like she got hit in the head with a rock. It's like, shit, there's a serial killer loose in the woods. I think I'll rent a secluded cab and not tell anybody where I'm going and hang out in my underwear all day. Oh, there's a serial killer door. I think, you know, I, I couldn't understand. I never knew any women like that. I never understood those characters. So part of it, uh, this is going back 20 years, was a desire to break all of those stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Great, and that's interesting to know that you've switched from male to female characters yeah. as the lead in your TV. Was yeah. there a conscious decision as to why? Or did for me, it was just, the, first of all, some, some of the stories were more modern that way. But for The Stranger, and I don't know if you saw The Stranger TV series, yes. but there's an early scene when Richard Armitage is, is, at, a, is at a soccer uh, match at a bar, yeah. and Hannah John came and comes in and drops a bomb on him. Mm -hmm. and the dynamic between two men is just yeah. kind of boring. I don't know. Hannah was the stranger to me. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, I wanted her to be cool and young and hip and diverse and just make a presence when she came in. And that dynamic when, it, when, it, when Hannah came in just worked so much better than the guys that, that auditioned for that role. I love that. And it's good to see the women not being the damsels. Oh, no, never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and Siobhan Finneran, who played the... The, the cop in that show who's mm -hmm. such a wonderful, yes. wonderful actress, she's never the victim. Yes. Yeah, Good. she's always tough. Good, <laughs> excellent, that was a great answer, thank you. That's really interesting to get a bit more of a deep dive yeah. into that. Do you always know how your books will end when you're writing them, and have you ever written a book and changed the ending? I, I do always know, and I don't think I've ever changed. I mean, I always know who did it. So if you watch The Stranger, I knew where, you know, when his wife vanished, I knew where she was. Mm -hmm. If you watch Stay Close, I knew what happened to Stuart Green and, and how it was all going to resolve and who had committed the murders. So, um, yeah, I always know the ending. I don't know anything else. I know mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. I compare it to driving from my home state of New Jersey across the U.S. to California. I may go Route 80, mm -hmm. which is the direct route, but chances are I'll go via the Suez Canal or stop in Tokyo. But knowing the ending for me makes that ending work. A lot of, a lot of mysteries or shows, a, a mystery mo movies or TV series or books, they don't end well because they don't think of the ending beforehand and so they're forced to try to, I have to have the great ending in my mind before we start. My final question, probably one of the hardest questions to ask, uh -oh. so I apologize. <laughs> what is your favorite book of all time and why? My favorite book of all time is American Pastoral by Philip Roth. Philip Roth is probably my favorite writer that's the most complete novel I've ever read. Um, it also involves Newark, New Jersey, where I was born. 
Fab. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just walking back home from the train station. It's very cold. It's very dark. I'll debrief you when I get back. Okay, I'm back home. I've done going to London for a bit now, I'm gonna say that. I had a really good day today though, a really good day. Managed to do everything I wanted to do. I somehow planned time effectively. So, met up with Kath, we went to Harrods, we went to Selfridges, we did Liberty, and we did Covent Garden, where there was the best Christmas tree. I feel like Jade and I needed to do that on Saturday because we were very much hunting for the perfect Christmas tree. So it was a good time. I think Selfridges had the best Christmas section. It had just all these lovely magical sections and some really fun decorations. And it just felt very Christmassy, very atmospheric there. Harrods was a nice section, but it was, was very Harrods-y, as to be expected. And Liberty had a really lovely section as well. Liberty, the building, is just stunning. It's a really beautiful shop in itself. So all of those things were fun. I enjoyed that very, very much. Covent Garden was at the end of our trip and that was also really beautiful, especially at night. I think going last there was perfect because everything was just lit up so magically and it just felt really really nice. Obviously I was in London as well for the Harlan Coben book event. This was to celebrate the release of the match. This I finished on the tube and I think I've mentioned already that I finished this and I won't be giving any spoilers but this certainly kept me guessing and I love it when a book does that. I think for me my enjoyment of a book hinges on the intrigue level and if there is high intrigue and if I just cannot put it down because I need to know what is going to happen then I'm a happy gal and <laughs> this definitely did that for me. Constantly kept me guessing, I had no idea what direction it was going to take and from the start of this book to the end we go through a lot of different journeys and I really enjoyed reading about that. So as I said this event was to promote the match and also I Will Find You, which is an arc that I received. This one comes out in March 2023. Very excited about this one as well. I will definitely be getting to this one also. Floppy book alert! So talking to Harlan about his writing was really interesting. One of the things that I really wanted to chat with him about was the representation of women in his books. I've read a couple of Harlan Coben books and they have all been men main characters. And I've obviously read blurbs of a couple more and just looked into his writing a little bit. And I just wanted to chat about the lead characters that he has and what the role of women are in his books and that was a really interesting conversation. I learned some really interesting things such as the fact that in some of his TV shows when they've been adapted he has changed the main character from being a man to being a woman which I wasn't aware of so that was really cool to find out as well. Generally it was a really great chat, Harlan was really lovely to chat to. I just love talking to authors about their writing, it makes me even more passionate to read more and that definitely did this tonight, so it was a very, very cool event. Thank you so much Century Books for inviting me along. Obviously, thank you to Harlan Coben for writing so many books, like so many books. Look at this list of books. How does somebody have this many ideas in their brain? It is impressive. But yes, I got my, my copy signed, I got my ARC signed. See? Very exciting. It was a great day. I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. It was just a little little day out in London vlog with a book event at the end. If you did enjoy, please do give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what you are currently reading. I haven't asked that for a while. Or if you don't know what to comment and you would like to comment something, a little book stack emoji because I have a very tiny little stack of books. <laughs> you can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed and link down below you will find my Patreon. I do lots of extra content and also my online shop. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.